Jet Airways has shut down its operations after flying for 25 years, a quarter of a century. Lenders have declined to extend a 400 crore rupee lifeline. Jet Airways is seeking 1,500 crore rupees to save itself, to pay salaries and overdues. But banks do not want to repeat a Kingfisher-like mistake, where they took a haircut, suffered losses to absorb a heavy bailout to a sinking company. Often, airlines simply restructure their debt with state-owned banks absorbing their losses through a bailout. Now, this Jet Airways shutdown has put nearly 22,000 jobs at stake. The Jet Employee Association is asking for the government's help. I don't have money to come to work. Sorry to tell you. I have got only 20 rupees in my purse. How, do, how, how long can I take money from my mother? And she is my mother. She will say, never say no to me. My wife also will never say no to me. At the present situation, my father is undergoing some kind of ailing expenses. I have to see to him, I have to see to my mother and I have to see to my wife. My wife is not only injured, she is very badly injured. Tomorrow is a test regarding an x-ray. I don't have money to pay for that thing. We wanted help from government. We want government to support us because it is not like we are just private airline, so government would support us. But we want government to help us because we pay taxes on each and every seats, every passenger take, pays taxes. It is only the, it is not only the airline's responsibility, even government has to look towards it because it is not a small airline, it is Jet Airways, it is very big brand. We've discussed the struggles in Indian aviation sector. High fuel prices, rupee devaluation, duties on aviation turbine fuel and several state taxes are one reason. But the Jet story is a crash course, quote unquote on how not to run a business. Naresh Goel cannot turn around and blame anyone else for this failure. A year ago, the Tatas had an eye on buying Jet. There was also an interest from American investment firm TPG Capital and Indigo. Reports say that the Tatas wanted Goel to step aside. He failed to take the offer of Delta Airlines as well. Goel is said to have wanted a higher share price. It's a simple rule. You cannot choose when you're in need. But Naresh Goel did not want to lose control and now he has lost his entire business. Some estimates peg Jet's daily loss at nearly 21 crore rupees. The company has more than 15,000 crore rupees to pay as debt and dues. Why did Jet fail? Is it just the nature of the aviation business in India? Sure, aviation business is a risky one, but Jet's problems are largely self-inflicted. Naresh Goel and his wife Anita exerted full control over the company. How did they fix the ticket prices? The duo is said to have called up the bosses of other competing airlines when the prices were cut too much. Now, rule number one to survive in a free market is to run business with pragmatism, not in coalition with other players who are your competitors. Such reactive tactics are bound to fail someday. The other thing is the forward bookings. One Jet's aggressive forward booking strategy gave it liquidity. That was some time ago. Now it has turned into a mountain of debt, 3,500 crore rupees. Jet's story is also a story of nepotism. Naresh Goel's wife and son were part of the day-to-day -day running of the company. Besides, when your company is not in the pink of health, what do you do? You cut costs, you spend frugally, you basically clean the rut. Jet Airways decided to expand. A dozen years ago, when the low-fare air carriers became a reality in India, Jet developed ambitions. It bought Air Sahara to take on Air Deccan, Indigo and SpiceJet. Needless to say, Jet, always, Jet Airways, in fact, never really recovered from the many problems that this acquisition led to. Here I digress to, uh, digress to make a point. Let's look at the smartphone industry around the world. Apple plays the niche game. But Apple knows its customers, its business, its economics. Jet was bleeding money, but Naresh Goel configured his planes like palaces. He built only 308 seats, much below the global standard of 400. One reason why Goel may have played a long hand in this in 2011-12, when Jet Airways faced its first financial crunch, Goel used his networking skills. He roped in Etihad, which bought 24% stake for nearly $400 million. As expected, Etihad also needed more control to run a prudent business, but Naresh Goel interpreted it as a takeover of his beloved company. What is the lesson from the saga? A founder is bigger 
a company rather is bigger than a founder. A founder may want total control, but businesses are not about individuals. Businesses are about practicality, profit, a futuristic outlook. When you have an opportunity to sell a fleet of your loss-making venture, thinking you can turn around your business because your networking skills, your friends in big places, you're simply asking for trouble. And talking about trouble, consumers are going to be the first casualty of these bad business practices. Thanks to the Jet Saga, international flyers are feeling the pinch. Airfares have skyrocketed beyond imagination in India. The cheapest Delhi-London flight fare touched a whopping 93,000 rupees. And mind you, it's a 16-hour uh, flight via Rome and Milan. In fact, there are hardly any non-stop flights now available to popular destinations like London and Amsterdam this week. And if you plan to fly from Mumbai to London next week, you're sure to burn a hole in your pocket. The cheapest one-way economy class ticket is 1.8 lakh rupees. That's thrice the normal airfare. Usually, during the summer peak season, the Mumbai-London fares would hover around 35 to 50,000 rupees. But now, with Jet having stopped operations, the fares have shot through the roof. The cheapest Mumbai-Amsterdam fly, flight ticket for Monday costs around 44,000 rupees. And even after shelling that amount, it'll take you 28 hours to get to your destination. For this is a flight via Nairobi. Now imagine the plight of those who already have their jet tickets booked for summer holidays. They've had to bear heavy losses. There are some who had advanced hotel bookings as well. And if they cancel it now, they would only get a small share in refund. Is there respite inside though? not at the moment. The Indian Civil Aviation Regulator, the DGCA, can only monitor domestic flights. And it has assured domestic passengers that it will monitor the domestic fares on a daily basis. It will engage with airlines for necessary steps. Bad business hurts businessmen. Besides, it hurts the economy, the consumer, the sentiment in the marketplace. And that's something that needs to be learned from the jet story as it looks to set looks set rather to go under the insolvency and bankruptcy code.